Hello, my name is Alexander Morari and I'm the founder of ITK Media. As you know, this is our podcast uh, on YouTube about Central and Eastern European uh, startups that are in pre-series A stage. Our guest today is uh, Pascal Talarida, the co-founder of uh, Jervis uh, Network. Jarvis Network is a set of protocols on Ethereum to bring traditional assets on chain in a very nutshell, in a very like short nutshell. Now, um, Pascal, um, should I say bonjour or, or dobre utro or dobre den? I, you can say both. Actually, I have to work on my Bulg- Bulgarian. So let's go with uh, dobre den. I didn't mention yet, yes, but the, the company is based in Bulgaria and you are um, originally French. What are you doing in Bulgaria? Tell me. So actually, Is it Sh- I have happen- Farm case or something different? No, <laughs> no, no I, I happen to travel a lot uh, when I was younger. Uh, so first, it's been seven years that I'm here in Bulgaria. So I was traveling. I was living uh, uh, abroad. I lived in uh, Germany. Then I lived in uh, Lithuania. And someone invited me uh, in uh, Bulgaria just to show how was it, how the cost uh, was. So I've been visiting him in Varna, which is on the seaside. And of course, I have spent a few, time, few, few days in, in Sofia. And when you come from Vilnius, which is a very beautiful city, but very cold, not, not of the, because of the weather, because of the people, they, were, they are less, let's say, welcoming, warming and so on. So when you come from there and you arrive in, in Sofia, it was a it was summer, everybody was very uh, welcoming. And I was like, okay, maybe I would like to change a bit the ambience. And, and I was like, hey, let's give it a try. And let's spend maybe a few months or one year here. And it's been seven years. I, I think I found my place here. Uh, I didn't live in many countries, of course, so I cannot compare with every country uh, in Europe. But from the countries I've lived in, uh, it is far from my favorite, and, and I feel very good here. Amazing. Okay. And y- you are the uh, proof that you can survive in Bulgaria without speaking or not speaking Bulgarian, right? This is doable. <laughs> yeah. I'm ashamed of that because honestly, it's been seven years, so I should almost be uh, fluent. So, you know, uh, but yeah, the cool thing is that young people in Bulgaria, they speak English because compared to France and maybe also Italia and so on, they start yeah. learning uh, uh, English and German uh, and Russian uh, at school. I mean, very when they are very young. So they actually grew up with a decent level in English and also uh, in France, most, if not all, the foreign uh, movies from, you know, America, you can son, they are dubbed. So, so you you only have French uh, doubling uh, English yeah. movies. While in Bulgaria, sure. they don't do it. So, if you want to watch uh, American movie, it will be in English with subtitles. And I guess it helps them to uh, yeah uh, learn uh, better than we do. So, thanks from thankfully for me, uh, many people speak English here. Absolutely true. Uh, due to the fact that Romanian, Bulgarian, let's say Moldovan market, as far as uh, s- uh, movie industry, are not big enough to justify full dubbing uh, effort, they're just going by the subtitles. And that's true. That's one of the reasons why so many Romanians speak fluent English, uh, Bulgarians, and uh, uh, Eastern Europeans as such. Um, but you know, uh, uh, anecdotes. Uh, so in France, uh, when we're teenagers, there were two groups of teenagers, basically. There was the one who were uh, li- uh, watching movies uh, in the original language, and the one like me who were just watching them in French. And I remember that being young, we found uh, that the teenagers who were watching the movies in the original language were a bit, you know, marginal people, weirdo, you know, this kind of thing. Because it was, why? Why you should do that? And, um, effort, and yeah. yeah. And now that, of course, I'm, I'm only watching movies in English, when sometimes by hazard, uh, I'm, 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 I'm seeing one movie, uh, you know, when I visit uh, my family in France, uh, and I see the doubling, and I'm like, wow, it, 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 it basically hurts my, he- my ears uh, because the low of the low quality of the doubling and so on. And it's the kind of thing that I didn't realize before. And now I cannot watch an American or, you know, in, in English speaking movie in, uh, in, in French, it's not possible. And you speak many languages and uh, switching to the scenario itself uh, and coming to round one, the solution of the product that you're developing. I think you could say also that uh, Pascal Talarida is very fluent in uh, all things crypto, uh, blockchain, Ethereum, and all this stuff. So, um, so as, as, we, as we discussed before the podcast, you started 
the, your journey developing a trading platform and then you move to a more um, more sophisticated should I say uh, business and uh, guide us guide us briefly you know through your history and what you're developing right now yes yeah, so uh, we we were developing a trading platform which was uh, I mean, the, the, the thing we wanted to do, it was to make trading a bit more accessible. And we were very focusing on uh, making the best user experience. Like, uh, you know, many trading platforms, they are very sophisticated. Uh, they have a lot of features. It's not what we wanted. What we wanted, it was to do just two free features, but very well taught and, and, and well designed. And that's all. And uh, so we did it. So we were quite happy. And then in 2017, we found out about crypto and uh, not blockchain, just crypto. And we're like, oh, such a cool asset because before we were mainly focusing on uh, markets such as Forex, uh, stocks, and so on. And so we liked it uh, from a speculative point of view, of course. And we wanted to plug our trading platform, which was designed to be connected uh, with uh, traditional brokers uh, to an exchange. So this is how actually we started. So first we connected the platform to Poloniex, which was a, a leading exchange back then. And this is how we basically uh, fell into the rabbit hole. Then there was this craze uh, about the ICOs, uh, you know, fundraising with tokens and so on. And this is when we started to actually find out that behind each cryptos, there could be some very cool projects and sometimes some, uh, how to say, utopia. You know? And this is how we started uh, to, to like uh, even more the space. And then I found out about smart contracts and Ethereum, of course. And I think the moment where I understood that a smart contract is actually a software that can replace a broker, I was like, hey, why we should just build a tool to connect to existing broker while we could actually create our own broker on chain? And basically, this is when we switch from this first venture to what we are building now. Of course, when we found out about crypto and blockchain and so on, we didn't have the knowledge that uh, we have before today, uh, and the ecosystem was not as developed as it is today. So we had a vague idea of what we wanted to do and how we had to do it. But it took us more than a year until 2019 to really uh, know what we have to do and, and to start the, the real work. So your R&D period was one year and you came and, and it brought you to, to, to what, what idea, what exact idea you have now and you're, you've been working for the last two years. So uh, to, to understand, you have first to understand Forex. So Forex is where people can exchange currencies. If you have Euro and you want Japanese Yen, it goes through the Forex. It is used for many things. If you travel, you need Forex to exchange your currencies. If you do international trade, you also need Forex to exchange currencies, to hedge and so on. But there is one use case that uh, people maybe do not think about it. And uh, I call it a ramp to access liquidity. Let's say that you are a hedge fund uh, in, the, uh, in Paris and you want to buy, you want to invest in Apple stocks. The thing is that Apple stocks are uh, paired against USD. So you cannot buy them with, with Euro. So what you have to do okay. first is okay. to go on the Forex market to exchange them for USD and to buy uh, Apple stock. So, so it means that Forex in, in that regard is used as a ramp to access foreign liquidity. In crypto, it's a bit different, of course, because you, know, you can basically trade everything you want. But in crypto, there is something else. The, there is the US dollar, which is kind of hegemonious, like it's everywhere. All the liquidity is around the dollar. So the thing is, when you are in Europe or in Asia or whatever, and you have Euro for someone living in, in Europe, you have Euro and you would like to start getting into uh, uh, cryptocurrencies. And then you found out that actually everything is around the dollar. So it creates some friction from a user experience point of view, from a risk management point of view as well, because you know, everything is labeled in dollar. And, uh, and, and, and what we wanted to do is basically to tell people, okay, look, uh, you can also use Euro, you can also use Swiss franc and so on. But uh, since everything is on the dollar, instead of trying to compete with the dollar, we will just recreate the Forex on the blockchain. So when you have Euro and you, and you want to buy Bitcoin, or if you want to buy any assets on the blockchain, instead of trying to find liquidity providers and market makers and tell them, please, can you 
try to create a market with euro or whatever, which, which will cost a lot of money. What we do is we allow people to exchange their euro or whatever currency they have uh, on the blockchain for USD, and then they can buy anything they want. So basically, we have we have built a ramp to access liquidity, and 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 I think it's uh, more efficient to do this rather than to try to create again uh, uh, all, all those different markets. So it's like if we say, look. USD have won, we cannot compete. So let's try to find a way uh, to, to access the USD liquidity from any currencies, which means that's, and it's, it, it is already working today. If you go through our platform, you can have Euro, Swiss franc, uh, British pound. Uh, since we are in Bulgaria, we also have launched uh, the, the Bulgarian LEV and many other currencies, uh, the peso from Philippines and so on and so on. And you can exchange those, uh, so we call them stable coins. Uh, so it's you on the blockchain. So you can exchange those stable coins for virtually any cryptocurrency with the same liquidity as if you were using dollar. And the way it works is that we have this on-chain Forex. So when I said on-chain, I mean a Forex on the blockchain, which will convert your Euro into USD and then exchange it for another asset. So this is what we have built. And uh, yeah, so far, uh, um, we are pretty happy with, with the results. Uh, maybe I will explain you a bit after what can be built on the top of what we have done, because it's very cool to tell people, hey, yeah, you can buy Bitcoin with Euro, but the most interesting is what then you can build on the top of our technology uh, to serve a, a broader mission, which is to bring finance to literally everyone and, uh, and to make it more accessible. So you do not give people access to US dollar, but to a system which reflects the actual um, values of US dollar without buying, or without having to buy the US dollar itself, which means right. probably that you have to be almost instant, you have to have all, almost instantaneous representation of the actual US dollar value live almost. Would that be so, correct? So, if you want to be interesting to hedge funds and so on, any slippage would be critical for them sometimes. Yeah. So, so the, the way uh, it could be seen is that first, what we do, we issue the stable coins. So we have launched a euro on the blockchain. And when you hold this euro, it is exactly like if you were holding a real euro, even though it is not a real Act euro. Very dollar. Not a real euro. So, so it, it, it tracks, yeah, it is spec to dollar, but it's easier to say it is spec to the price of euro in dollar. So it yeah, is, it okay. is, yeah. And then this euro, what the technology we have built is that you can convert it instantly. I mean, instantly on the blockchain, nothing is instant. So you, you can convert it at the market rate, uh, euro dollar, for uh, a dollar which is already on the blockchain. So it's a stable coin. Uh, which uh, is actually the USDC. It is a stablecoin launched by uh, Circle, a company in the US. And the difference with our euro is that behind our euros, they are not real euros. It's, it's what we call a, a synthetic asset. But behind this USDC, they are real uh, dollar held in a bank. So basically the technology we have built is, it's a way to convert any currencies which we have issued on the blockchain into dollar and then you can do whatever you want. And if, if you want this dollar to be used to buy Bitcoin, you do it. And on the blockchain, what is cool is that you can combine different actions in a single action. So with our Euro, if you want to buy Bitcoin, when you, with our technology, basically, you, you don't see anything. It just go from Euro to Bitcoin. But what is happening under the hood is that, yeah, we convert those Euros for dollar and then those dollar for Bitcoin. And we convert the, the, the dollar in, into Bitcoin using the most liquid venue. So you can have the best price. And by doing that, uh, as of today, we are almost as uh, liquid as Binance. So for example, if you want to buy Bitcoin today with your Euro using Binance, you will get a certain price. And if you want to buy Bitcoin with our Euro on our platform, we are very close the balance price we, we will we will pass them soon it's just a matter of time and and to integrate better uh, venue for the liquidity 
But Euro may sound maybe not super sexy because you know there are many exchanges uh, that provide uh, their user with the possibility to buy Bitcoin or any uh, or many other currency, uh, cryptocurrency with, with Euro. When uh, things start to get interesting is that you can do it with any currency we have launched and you can buy any cryptocurrency. So for example, uh, we have launched, as I said, the Bulgarian Lev, or we plan on launching the Zloty from Poland. So if you are in Poland and you want to buy Bitcoin or Ether uh, using your Zloty, you have to find basically a local exchange because there is no Bitcoin Zloty market. I mean, you know, it's, it's too tiny. So you go to a local exchange, you may have good rate. I mean, they, they do their internal source, you know, but it won't be as good as if you were trading uh, with dollar. So when we will launch the Zloty, we will provide with people in Poland the possibility to convert those Zloty on the blockchain into Bitcoin at a way better rate than they could have had uh, using their local exchange. So, so what we can do by launching more, let's say, exotic currencies, and uh, so above, uh, apart from Euro and, and Swiss franc and so on, it's to give the opportunity for anyone to access the best liquidity, not only for Bitcoin, basically for any cryptocurrencies that uh, is live on the blockchain. And uh, it can go as far as doing it in Africa. We also have launched, for example, a synthetic uh, franc CFA, which is a currency being used in 14 countries in Central Africa and, and uh, West Africa. And uh, very the same for people who want to buy Bitcoin or, or Aave token or wh whatever, you name it. It's kind of complicated because, as you may know, uh, they don't have the good infrastructure uh, and also, it's very hard for them to access foreign uh, 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 market and, and therefore liquidity. So whenever someone there in Cameroon, for example, wants to buy Bitcoin, I, I will constantly say Bitcoin because I guess it's the easiest, they will pay what we call a premium, which means that they will buy the Bitcoin a bit at a higher price. I mean, not a bit, actually, sometimes it's quite, quite a bit, but they buy it at a higher price than the Bitcoin we can buy here in, uh, in Europe. So by using our technology, people holding our synthetic uh, franc CFA uh, who are actually, uh, because it's already live, they are able to exchange them for any cryptocurrency, including Bitcoin, at the best rate. And this is you know, to increase, further increase financial inclusion, inclusion and basically to make market a bit more fair. Everybody could uh, be able to trade at the same price. Yeah, a little bit of a, of a let's say, dis, dis, as a discussion point. Financial inclusion, you say yes, you keep repeating this, and this is one of the values that you attach to like your solution. And how would you react that this is actually a wider and more, more um, accessible financial inclusion to highly speculative markets in a way? So, yeah, creating because... risks. It's true because for now, when you speak about cryptocurrency, most of the people, they will just think about Bitcoin. And they will, uh, they will say, okay, Bitcoin is volatile, it's risky, I heard that it's a scam and so on and so on. But actually, this is a tree hiding the forest. Cryptocurrency is not just volatile assets. What is cool is that uh, on the blockchain, you can also run services, financial services. And we, we call them decentralized finance. Uh, so DeFi or, uh, you know, we, we call it DeFi. So DeFi, what is it? It's, for now, what is it? It's, we have taken what is currently existing in the traditional financial world, insurances, credit company, brokers, exchanges, everything. And Amazing. we have somehow converted uh, them into uh, 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 smart contracts running on the blockchain. So today, on the blockchain, we have insurance. It's not company, but I will say insurance company. We have exchanges, brokers. We have uh, uh, products that can issue derivative like uh, options, uh, futures, uh, forward contract, everything. And what people are doing now on the blockchain is to create an alternative financial system, which as of today, uh, if I'm not mistaken, holds something like uh, $200 billion uh, worth of assets. So it's not a small experience anymore. Now it starts to be very big. And the cool thing about those services is that they're accessible by everyone. And when I mean accessible, I mean that you can either access the service, so to be a user, so you can subscribe to insurance, 
you can use an exchange in order to you know swap uh, uh, tokens but you can also be the service provider yourself and this is uh, the game changer like if you think that insurance company is a very good business and you you would love to run an insurance in the real world because you know they make money well you can do it on the blockchain and it doesn't require any skills it doesn't require literally anything i actually happen to be an insurer on the blockchain like i'm participating to a project which provides insurance to other projects uh, so most of the insurance it's against hack maybe you have heard that some exchanges have been hacked and people has lost money or maybe some you know so today you can already protect uh, yourself from this those risks and the way it works basically for insurance uh, pardon me the, 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 the let's say the the, the bracket uh, i provide capital so let's say i'm providing uh, 1000 dollar worth of of assets it could be dollar so 1000 dollar on the blockchain and i'm saying if you pay me 15 dollar or, or, or 100 dollar per year i will keep those 1000 dollar here and if during this year one of the projects you are using is being hacked or you are being robbed or basically you are you are losing money and uh, this loss is covered by the policy that you have bought the insurance policy i'm going to use the 1000 usd to reimburse you and my bet is that during this year nothing will happen so i will at the end of the year just take back my 1000 dollar and the insurance subscription that uh, i've been receiving and it's somehow something like 10% per year, you know. So it, it's it's a good return on, on my investment. So I'm providing liquidity in insurance companies. I mean protocols. We call them protocols on the blockchain. I'm also an exchange, like I'm providing liquidity on decentralized exchange, so people can buy and sell assets. So financial inclusion is not just hey, I can buy Bitcoin and I can speculate uh, now easily. Now, it's also a way to tell people, hey, if you want to increase your digital wealth, if you want actually to let's say, improve your, your life, if you, if you really need uh, you know, this in your life to win more money and so on, then you can enter into this new ecosystem quite easily and using your own currency. No need to make calculation with dollar and so on and so on. So this is basically what we say. Actually, our, our, our motto is to say, we are developing the technology which helps people uh, to access liquidity and yield so opportunities. So this is what it is about. And so speaking of infrastructure or oh, what actually makes it tick uh, or the protocols, how many protocols you have created by now? And, um, and again, in a natural, what can be built on top of that? Uh, of those protocols. So you mentioned, I think, oh, we have discussed already Synterium, Synterium, right? As one of the protocols uh, on yeah. your yeah, Jarvis network. And um, what's the current, let's say, adoption of this protocol and uh, how popular it is? And what's important as well, do you have it still in the pilot stage or are you now earning? And what's the, uh, what's the business model behind? So, uh, so yeah, the, the, the name of the project, yeah, it's, it's called Jarvis Network. And yeah. uh, what we want to do, it's, it's different things, protocols, application, and so on. Okay. Uh, with the mission, as I said before, to bring DeFi to everyone. The first protocol that we have launched is named Synterium. So it's just the name of the technology. And uh, so it's a contraction between synthetic, because we are doing synthetic uh, currencies, and uh, Ethereum, even though we are not uh, only on Ethereum. Uh, I will say that we're at the beginning of our project. We have launched. Right now, our protocol is securing, uh, I think it's a around $6 million of, uh, of a value, which means that uh, $6 million of uh, euro, Swiss franc, and so on and so on, has been credited on our protocol and are currently into circulation. So people are currently using them to exchange them, trade them, earn uh, uh, yields uh, on the top of it and so on. Uh, in terms of integration and usage, uh, the thing that I think I'm the, I'm the most excited about is that we partnered with a company in Switzerland. It's a Swiss regulated entity called uh, Mont Pelerin, MMT, uh, Mont, you know, Montaigne, Mont Pelerin. And uh, so what they do actually, they, they, they are an OTC desk. So OTC over the counter, it's a, it's a, it's a way to buy and sell 
an asset. So either use an exchange, you know, with an order book and so on, or OTC is basically, hey, I have this amount of, of assets, uh, how much you, 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 you can buy and this kind of thing. So they have an OTC for crypto fiat, which means that you can buy some cryptocurrencies with them, like Bitcoin or, or Ether, uh, with fiat. And we, we spoke with them a while back and we had the common vision. So uh, the, the founder is named Arno, and he told me, look, what I want to build, it's for now an infrastructure to allow people to go seamlessly from, free, some, fr from fiat, so fiat currencies and euro and so on, to crypto. But my long-term vision will be to create somehow a Revolut-like uh, wallet onto the blockchain. And when he said Revolut, uh, I don't know if all your audience will be familiar with them. It's, it's a neo bank. Uh, it's a mobile first bank, let's say. But it's not really a bank. For me, it's more a financial platform because you can, it, it aggregates many services. You have Forex, you have stock trading, you have even crypto trading. You can, you can even you know, donate to charity. You can pay. I mean, it, 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 it's, it, it's an aggregator. You can issue of your own cards, uh, one, one time yeah. credit cards or payment cards. Yeah, debit cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and, and he told me, I would like to be the same on the blockchain. And I was like, look, it's amazing because it's what I've been telling to people for a while now. But what we want to do is to build the technology to allow people like you to, to create a Revolut uh, like on, on, the, on the top of the blockchain. And I told him, look, what we do is that we have built the Forex on the blockchain and we have developed the technology to exchange a euro on the blockchain for Bitcoin or for anything. So it's basically what Revolut allows you, uh, like when you can exchange one currency to another one, or when you can buy uh, uh, Ether or Bitcoin with Euro. So I told him, look, and, and, I com and we compared the rates to show him that we have even better rates than Revolut itself uh, for Forex and for, and for cryptocurrency. So I told him, look, maybe we can do something together. Like you help people to smoothly go from the fiat world to the crypto world, and we have the technology to allow people to exchange euro, I mean, fiat on the blockchain. So, so what we have done is that now they allow people literally to deposit fiat into the blockchain. So if you have 10,000 euro, real euro, in your bank accounts, with them in less than a day, or let's say like one day, one working day, you can transfer them into 10,000 euro on the blockchain. So basically, they are a ramp to access blockchain. So what actually people are buying, they are buying our euros. So your 10,000 real euro are becoming, so there is no fee, not nothing. So they, they become instantly 10,000 J euro. We, we, our, our, our euro is called the J euro, you know, Jarvis. So, so then when you have those J euro, you can do whatever you want because now you can use our technology. You can exchange them for our Swiss franc or our British pound or wh whatever currency we have. Very soon, I think this week or next week, we are, uh, will be launching Canadian dollar and Australian dollar. So you will also be able to exchange them for Canadian dollar, for example. But then you can also buy Bitcoin or any cryptocurrency that is live on the blockchain. So by combining their infrastructure and their know-how, they are good in compliance. They are good in on and off ramping people. They, they know banks, they know regulators. So they have a very uh, interesting skill, uh, set of skills that we lack of. And we have the technology that they do not have. So we basically joined uh, together to, ask, to, to provide users this possibility to deposit fiat into the blockchain. But what is in, in awesome is that it can work the other way. So if you have, let's say, uh, uh, 20,000 Swiss franc on the blockchain, you can withdraw them into your bank accounts Again, either within the same day or one or two days after, depending on you know, how the payment is processed. So this is what we call the fiat on-ramp and the fiat off-ramp. So right now, and again, it's already working since uh, June, people can seamlessly go from euro to the blockchain or from the blockchain to euro or pound or Singapore dollar, I mean, you name it, uh, thanks to this combination of... Uh, of, of things. So uh, the volume that has been uh, trade, uh, that has been done, uh, performed since, uh, let's say it, it was July because it was end of June, we are now getting closer to $1 million uh, uh, processed uh, in, uh, with them. 
So this is basically uh, one of the use cases of our technology. It, it, it is used as an onboarding into crypto. Of course, it is in Europe, and we, we, we discuss with them how to extend uh, the scope. So now they try to find uh, uh, people in Indonesia, uh, so you know, Southeast Asia, uh, uh, so Vietnam, uh, Philippines, Australia, and so on, to, 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 to find partners to, to, to lower uh, the fees uh, you know, for doing transfer and so on. But I also would like to find people in Africa and, uh, and elsewhere. And uh, ideally, what we would like is to have a network of companies like uh, Mont Pelerin in Africa, in Asia, in, in South uh, America, that could do what Mont Pelerin is doing for us, I mean, with us in, 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 in Europe. So the challenge is this, if, as I, I told you before, we have launched the France CFA on the blockchain, but we didn't succeed to secure a partnership with a company in, uh, in Africa, which could help people in Africa to purchase our synthetic uh, CFA with real CFA. Once this is done, it's awesome. We, we, we have the bridge that would allow people in Cameroon, Senegal, Burkina Faso, and so on, to seamlessly get into the blockchain the same way people can do in Europe with using Mont Pelerin, and then access either liquidity or yield or financial services, uh, like I, I was mentioning before. So on your, on, on your platform, uh, the fiat money, like G, uh, I mean, British pound, they are translated like or, or transferred into J, uh, J, G, D, G, P, P. Um, yeah. And so you're basically adding J and this is unique. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't researched that, but I understand this is unique. This is something that you came up with, right? So in your, your list of uh, currencies will be increasing and you will be adding J uh, to the name of the currency to, to show that this is already uh, crypto, um, Correct. denominated kind of in crypto. And question right. is, you, you mentioned 10,000 euros. When I transfer this into uh, J euros, what's, what's the commission? Is there a, a, a spread, a something that I'm losing during the process? I mean, losing, I'm paying, let's say, for, for the very service. So, so like many startups, uh, onboarding users is uh, expensive because you you used to pay for your users. And this is what we are doing now. So we are paying actually. So there is a commission. I mean, Mont Pelerin has to make money, you know, it's their business. So far now we are subsidizing uh, those commissions and we will keep doing it uh, for quite a while. I, I think until we, we reach uh, something, I guess, close to uh, $10 million of, uh, you know, of purchase. And then we will have to find a, a sustainable way to do it. So, which means that we also have to uh, start making money. I mean, more money than what we're doing now in order to uh, keep subsidizing uh, those fees. Because if tomorrow we stop subsidizing those fees, people will still use this service, but it won't be the same. I mean, now what we tell people is, look, you have Euro, you can, you can deposit them into the blockchain one to one. It's a, it's a formidable uh, user experience. Honestly, they are, almost no other project or exchanges that will uh, uh, subsidize the fees. So you always lose a bit, you know, and, and, and it's a bit annoying. So, so we are really attached to this user experience. So we'll do our best to try keeping subsidizing those fees, negotiate with also Mont Pelerin, lower commissions and this kind of thing. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So, so no fees, but then how can we make money? So this is the interesting part. Uh, it's, it's not like a traditional company. Uh, there is no dividend, there is no turnover of the, of the company per se. What we have built is, is a tool that can be used by anyone to buy and to sell uh, uh, assets on the blockchain. How we make money is that we are one of the users of this tool. So let me explain you a bit how does it work behind the, the, the scene. When uh, you buy uh, Bitcoin, uh, sorry, when, when you want to buy J Euro on our platform. So you can do it in two ways. The first way is what I've been telling you with Mont Pelerin, our partner. So you have Euro and you can buy J Euro. There is another way, of course, if you already have crypto, uh, you can also buy J Euro. So let's say you have Bitcoin or you have USDC, which is the US stablecoin, and you want to purchase some, some J Euro. So, so you will buy J Euro, but you buy to who? Well, you buy to liquidity providers. You, you buy to someone willing to sell euro. 
So, so a liquid tip rider is the one providing the service in our platform. So we just have created the platform, the infrastructure, but it's empty. It's an empty shell. Then we, we put it on the blockchain and we tell, look, anyone who wants to become a service provider, just put your money there. And every time someone will buy euro, actually, you're going to sell euro. And, and, and so you have the liquidity provider on one hand and the users on the other hand. So the way to make money with our technology is actually to be a liquidity provider. So we have built the tech and we are one of the users of this tech. And this is how we make money. So we make money with trading fees. Every time someone will buy on our platform or sell euro or Swiss franc or whatever, there is a small fee which, is, uh, uh, which goes to the liquidity providers and another small fee that goes to somehow, let's call it the treasury of the project, which is funny, it is not owned by us. Like us as a company, we do not have a control over this treasury. So it, it's like a insurance funds that we cannot touch and, and the treasury is just growing. And you will ask, okay, what's the point of this treasury then? So the point of this treasury is that uh, it could be managed by uh, people who have an interest in our protocol and they can have a token. So we have our own token, which somehow it is, it is not a share of uh, the protocol, but it gives the right to participate uh, to, to the protocol. And having those tokens allows you to decide what to do with this treasury. So it can be kept as it is, and it can be used for insurance if, if one day there is a problem and we could reimburse users. But it can also this start to be, a, I mean, I, I can give you some example. It's a bit like an inception, you know, like the movie. But the protocol itself, because it's, it earns money, it can also be a liquidity provider. So yeah, it means okay, that yeah. the technology somehow can own money and can be its own liquidity provider to earn even more money. And this is how it works. So yeah, this is how we make money. There is another way how we make money, which is a bit complicated. So I will, I will just stay on the, on the, you know, I will remain superficial. Uh, but uh, let's say that our euro, Behind our euro, there is some kind of financial engineering, but I won't get into detail now to don't lose people. The thing uh, that is cool is that the financial engineering behind this euro is actually generating money on itself. So, so as a liquidity provider, you, you can have a share of what is behind, you know, how, how, how the euro works behind the scene. And you, can, and, and you make money just like that also. So, so liquidity providers, they earn trading fees, and plus they earn some kind of shares of the, of, the, of the profit realized by the financial engineering that makes all the system work. How many, how many people you would say are now using the, uh, the platform? Like people or organizations, I mean, okay? Uh, so, organi uh, so by organizations, I think uh, it's very small. But if, I, if by organization we, we mean companies, uh, I think you can count them on, on, on one hand or maybe two. Uh, we, more we more have individual users. But let me tell you why uh, some companies, they liked uh, our, um, our project. So the first time we launched, it was in February 2020, this year. I mean, last year. Yeah, yeah. And um, actually, no, wait, we are in 2021. So we launched in February 2021, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and uh, so we did a press release and so on. And we were really focusing on, on, on the retail, so on individual people. But interestingly, the first phone call we had was a company in, in Switzerland. And I absolutely have no idea how they found out about us. And, and, and it's a real estate agency, which happens to also do some uh, uh, management, like they, they rent properties, uh, you know, they collect uh, rent and so on and so on. They called us and said, look, we, we have one issue. Uh, we are paying negative interests on, uh, in our bank account, on, on our uh, Swiss franc. So uh, they asked us if what we have launched is without uh, negative interest. And I told them, yeah, I mean, our Swiss franc doesn't have negative interest. It actually is the opposite. It could, uh, to some extent, generate interest. So they were super interesting, interested and they're like, whoa, okay. So when we, uh, when we explained them that actually it's crypto behind and so on, they're like, ah, too risky for us, too shady, we don't touch. I was okay, fair enough. Then 
someone else called us and, and so on. So I, at the end of the, of, the, uh, of the day, I mean, not the day, but you know, it's a way of speaking, I had maybe calls with 10 different companies in France and in, and in Switzerland with the same problem. They don't want to pay negative interest, but they are too afraid about crypto. We have some companies who decided to jump into this opportunity and they purchased uh, Swiss franc on the blockchain and euro on the blockchain. And they are now holding some of their treasury uh, in these assets. Uh, but the problem is that most of the companies I've been speaking with, they are really afraid. So, so I think the most important uh, uh, part of the job now would actually be education. It's biz dev and education. So I have to spend time educating people, companies, you know, to tell them, look, this is how it works behind the scenes. Those are the risks uh, involved and, and this kind of thing. Because it's funny, some of the people, they, they just ask me, but can you live with the money? Like, can you scam us? It's, it's very hard to explain to people that blockchain technologies, the way we have designed it and the way many protocols have designed them, they are what we call trustless, which means that you do not need to trust me. Actually, trust is, is, is unimportant. You can even think I'm a thief. You can, doesn't matter. The technology on the blockchain cannot harm you. What we, what we have done cannot harm you. So, so I cannot steal from you. I cannot steal from anyone. And, and this is what we have to uh, teach people. And when we, we, success, we will successfully reach this point where more companies and so on will be familiar with holding cryptocurrencies in their, uh, you know, in their, uh, in the, in, in, in their uh, financial sheet and so on, uh, then uh, I, I can start to focus maybe a bit more in this area and have more companies uh, on board. But uh, we already have cool tools for companies. So for example, uh, as a company, we use our technology. As I told you, we provide uh, uh, liquidity. But we also are a user. Like we have uh, our own euro. We, we hold the balance in euro. And the cool thing is that with our partner in Switzerland, they actually can process payments. So when we pay salaries, when we pay invoices, it could be uh, the office rental, it could be internet, it could be the hosting of our website, you name it. Uh, we have to pay in euro, but we have, you have euro on the blockchain. So what we do, we use Mont Pelerin and we tell them, look, uh, uh, I send you 2000 J euro and this is the invoice. Uh, and please, can you send 2000 euro to the recipients uh, of this invoice? So since June, actually, we haven't touched our bank account. We only pay things in cryptocurrency. So of course, our accountant, he's at the end of his life. I mean, it's a mess for him to deal with cryptocurrency and so on because by chance we live in a country where you can hold uh, uh, cryptocurrencies as a company, you can you declare them. I mean, it's, it's possible here. It's just that there is no framework, so it's a bit messy and, and it's complicated for them. But it, it works and, and, and we are the living proof that you can do it. And so what we want to do in the future is to tell companies, look, uh, this is a business case for you. You can hold part of your balance sheet in crypto. If you are afraid about the volatility, you can hold our Euro, Swiss franc, Canadian dollar, wh whatever you want. Uh, you won't pay negative interests. And if you are willing to take a bit of risk, you can even generate some yield or interest on the top of your euros or, or whatever. And if you even want to, if you want to take even more risks, you actually can access to the crypto liquidity. You can buy Bitcoin, Ether, wh whatever you want. But this is really, if you want to do like, you know, Tesla and so on and to have Bitcoin in your balance sheet. So, so, so yeah, for now, as I said, we just have maybe five, six companies holding uh, our uh, assets uh, uh, in their accounts, uh, but, it was not meant to be this. Uh, we didn't build uh, what we have done for that. It, it just happened to be like that. But then we have, uh, I think, few thousands, uh, not, not more, uh, users, so individual users who are currently holding, trading, uh, using uh, our fiat uh, currencies. And of course, we want this number to grow uh, as much as possible. And uh, yeah, this is what I can say about the usage and, and, and who is using what we have done. My guess would be that among these individual retail users, there are, there's, there's a majority of people who know pretty well crypto and uh, the whole yeah. infrastructure. So these, these are your champions, I guess. And this is uh, who you need to employ or to, to, to get them interested to become your ambassadors into the wider kind of areas. I, I think right. you would not be able to spread the word by your own effort. 
those couple of thousand first clients, they are definitely open to adventures and taking risks just because they did well in some other crypto contexts. And if I were you, probably I would find a way somehow to get them interested to become your own ambassadors into the wider audiences, because I understand they come from different jurisdictions all around the world. And this is all you need, basically, uh, yeah. to create so, some kind of community and transfer your message, uh, spread your message through your current use users that, uh, that are, you know, they are glad to take the risk. And if their risk didn't realize, I mean, it, there was no uh, negative kind of, uh, you know, negative situations uh, using the platform and so on. These are the champions that you need to take care of. And uh, exactly. somehow. And I, actually, you're you very right. And it's true. I, I didn't think about speaking about that. But yeah, for now, what we do is, is for people who knows. And of course, we would like at some point to be used by people who do not know. Like, I would like at some point, yeah, to really have the revolute uh, on, 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 on the blockchain. But what you said about ambassador is very true. So the problem is that uh, people, they need uh, motivation. Usually it's mo financial motivation. Like I can't tell, hey, you like my product? Please spread the world. They said, oh, okay, I will tell to my friend, but that's all. So the way it works usually, Revolut, they have done it and many other uh, projects. They do either affiliate programs or, or referral. Like if you refer your friend, you have a free card, you know, and it worked pretty well. But on the blockchain, it's hard to do referral uh, on the blockchain. Everything is pseudo anonymous. So, you know, it, it can't work. It can't work at scale. So we have to find another way. So what blockchain projects are doing to coordinate and to create communities is to launch a token. The idea is that if you have a token and if you make this token to be usable in the project, it's possible that this token can accrue in value it can its price can go up it can go down but if you make it that the token is important for your protocol to to be used and, and to work then maybe people will want to buy your token and and then uh, the token becomes a make a coordination mechanism that can create communities and and then you don't do anything communities they organize themselves alone uh, they, they they even can take initiative and so and so on so this is what we have we have a token which is used as a coordination mechanism to create, to retain a community of ambassadors that spread the world and so on. And uh, yeah, this is basically for now how we do, but I would love in the future to try implementing some kind of referral or this kind of thing, but this cannot be done as of today. It could be done at a later stage. And of course we have to go there because you know, referral, everybody likes referral to earn passive income just by referring your friends and so on. So yeah. Pascal, let's move on. Time, time flies. And I suggest we skip round two competitors. You seem to be in a pretty, like, if not co comfortable, are convenient, but are definitely challenging, but also some unique, unique approach uh, that might probably make your company and your solutions also uh, unique. You just need to gain scale and momentum. And this is something that you will do with uh, like, you know, hard work effort and, and, and spreading the word. And let's jump into the company itself. So um, we mentioned already the company was started as such as 2016, in 2016 as trading platform, but then you quickly understood that it's much better to create the solution that you are now working in, on. And now the company, how many people you have now in the company? How, uh, how aggressively are you now recruiting and for what roles? Yeah, so we are 10. Uh, and we, we, we mainly hire developers. Um, it's a very competitive field. So it's not that easy to find the, the skills and the talent that uh, you may need. So it takes time uh, to hire. And uh, yeah, we are constantly hiring, basically. I think we still need two to three developers. Uh, we, we don't need to be a big team. And that's all. The cool thing is that also sometimes we were speaking about the community before. Sometimes some community members, they, they do some initiative like coding something, like uh, creating a, a dashboard to analyze data. Like right now, there is someone working on something like that. It's not, we don't pay for it. Mm -hmm. we, we didn't even ask for it. It's just someone said, hey, I think it would be cool to have it. So yeah, uh, right, right now we are 10 and trying to be 12, 13. And uh, as time goes, uh, we would like to not hire too many people in-house but mainly to rely on 
on uh, somehow this community to to join forces and to develop you know small tools uh, basically to okay. we have created the base we then want the community to build stuff on the top of it mm -hmm. and as far as your current team is it uh, remote remotely uh, remotely active your team or in an in an office space yeah half is uh, here in sofia in bulgaria the other half is spread across europe uh, we have two person in uh, italy uh, in Sweden, uh, and in uh, Turkey. Pascal, thanks. Let's move on uh, to the final round. And this is, as we call, Formula F3, funding for the future. Before speaking about the future, talking about the future, let's see your investment history by now. Based on our, uh, on our um, uh, information, your total funding by now is around $1.3 million. Correct, um, yeah. defined as pre-seed round, right? Correct, yeah. So tell me a couple of words about the investors you have right now. So it's important to note that uh, we didn't sell equity. Uh, we, we actually have sold uh, the token that I was mentioning before. Okay. So like okay. many companies in the blockchain, uh, you, you do not sell equity because basically the equity for a blockchain company could be worthless. Uh, because the value uh, is generating is generated, you know, on the blockchain. So it makes more sense to hold the token rather than to hold equity. Uh, so what we have done is uh, basically to discuss with some crypto funds, some, uh, but also individuals that wanted to join the, let's say, the, the adventure. And uh, yeah, we, we raised one point three million dollars. Uh, and uh, the thing is that we we were very lucky to have raised this amount of money in a period where cryptocurrencies were kind of low. Like uh, we have raised funds, of course, in cryptocurrencies and also in uh, fiat. Uh, so the fiat, well, they remain fiat, but the cryptocurrency that we had, we kept some of them in volatile assets, uh, like maybe 10 or 20% of, of, of the fundings. And that's all. And as I said, we are lucky enough, uh, crypto market went up. So it was very cool because we are supposed to raise additional funds a bit after. Uh, but finally, Thanks to uh, the raise of crypto, we have uh, been able to accumulate a, a bit more capital and to sell them at a higher price and, you know, to secure even more fundings. It doesn't mean that we won't need funding. So uh, we have two, uh, uh, let's say, big projects uh, for now. So the first thing, as I told you, is that we as a company, we are the main user of our uh, uh, protocol, which means that we have to supply liquidity. Supplying liquidity means that we need capital. So in the near future, we, we may uh, raise funds in order to uh, uh, put more money into uh, the blockchain. It doesn't need to be raised through this entity in Bulgaria, but uh, we, we can set up another company, for example, in Luxembourg, that will specifically be designed to provide service to this protocol. And, and so we could raise funds with this company for this specific, uh, uh, let's say, activity. Then uh, we would like to set up in the future maybe another company because right now, if you have understood, we, we have developed technology. So we are a technology provider. But as you have said it correctly, our product is for tech-savvy people. Like you have to know blockchain and this kind of thing. It's not for your, you know, your the famous, uh, it's for your grandma, your sister and so on. But it's what we want to do. Me, what my dream is actually to put a wallet in the hand of every people. And, and I want them to be surprised the day they will understand its blockchain behind. You know, I, I, I have a dream about this micro trottoir, you know, when people go in the street and say, hey, uh, what do you think about something? And, and I would like to launch a wallet and then a few months after to ask people, hey, do you know that actually behind this wallet, it's blockchain technology, that actually you have been trading cryptocurrencies and, and that the euro that you have been dealing with is not euro. And I want them to be surprised. I was like, oh, wow, but I was thinking crypto were complicated and so on and so on. So, to achieve this vision, of course, we will need uh, way more funding. So it's very possible that uh, we will uh, also have to raise funds for this particular project. As of today, we are still in the uh, development phase. Uh, we are maturing, but most likely next year, we will have uh, those uh, fundraising uh, rounds to, to be done. And can you disclose your uh, targeted amounts or, or the, the, the plans that you have for this uh, next round? How much uh, do you think you would need? Yeah, yeah so, so it's still unclear now because uh, there are some 
uh, stuff that we cannot predict. For example, uh, the legal costs, uh, legal expenses. So with the regulation that is maybe uh, getting you know more uh, harder and, and and that will come very soon, we may have to spend way more money into uh, you know compliance and so on and so on. So this could affect the amount of money uh, we want to raise. So as of today, you know we are thinking about okay the technical budget, marketing budget, uh, but then the legal budget is still an unknown. So this may uh, have to be increased uh, quite a lot. Uh, so this is for the, the wallet one. But I think we're speaking about something close to four to five uh, million euros. Uh, for, the, for the other one in, in, in Luxembourg, so in order to provide liquidity, uh, this is more like a, a crypto hedge fund. So it's, it's not really, uh, again, so liquidity is more like a company that will provide the financial services. Uh, and, and this basically, there is, because there is no equity, it's just, uh, I mean, people could buy, uh, could invest in, uh, in, in, uh, in shares. We, we use a, a limited partnership system, you know, where you buy a share, but you don't have uh, voting rights, you know, limited uh, rights uh, with your shares. And, and, and then this company basically will just uh, uh, make money by, by using this uh, technology, this protocol, and will just uh, convert this into dividend. Uh, for all the shareholders, so this uh, I think that a reasonable amount to to seek uh, for a first one could be around you know, 10 million uh, euros again, and uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Pascal, what you have described right now and introduced seems like uh, a pretty like demanding, intellectually and challenging, business-wise uh, topic that will definitely keep you busy for for quite some time and um uh, the your end goal you said that that, that that you want your users or us all to use blockchain based technology without even being aware that this is blockchain and uh, probably the same way as we uh, hop into a car and just uh, you know do like we we what we we turn the key and then push the pedal and we just go on down the road without knowing the whole combustion mechanisms and all this stuff. This is I understand your some kind of an end 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 game or, or, or dream somewhere down the road. And I wish you all the best. Good luck with that. We'll be I hope uh, keeping our hand on your on the pulse of your successes and uh, publishing from time to time your achievements on IT Key Media. Thank you very much. Thanks for that, Alex.